The Napa River watershed supports a diverse community of fish that have thrived in its waters for millennia. Home to 14 native freshwater species, the Napa River and its network of tributary streams contain some of the best remaining habitat in the Greater Bay Area. From the cool perennial headwater streams flowing out of the redwoods in the west to the warm dry scrub habitats that flank the eastern slopes live unique fish, each perfectly adapted to its environment. They provide us a way of measuring the pulse of the watershed. The health of our fish is a direct reflection of the health of our streams. Perhaps the most recognizable group of fish are the salmon and steelhead, totem species known for their amazing journeys from the open ocean to fresh water and sometimes back again. Each year these migrations begin with the Chinook salmon in the fall. Chinook, also known as king salmon because of their large size, have been spawning in the Napa River watershed for at least the past decade. Data are sparse on salmon returns to the Napa, but this species probably went extinct in the Bay Area watersheds in the early 1900s. Only recently have salmon begun to show up again with regularity. The RCD and our partners are studying whether the salmon we see in the Napa River each year were born here or are simply strays from other river systems. Steelhead and rainbow trout are the same species. They are capable of a remarkable variety of life history patterns. Some remain in fresh water their whole lives as trout, while others migrate to the ocean and grow to the size of salmon, returning to spawn in the same creeks that they were born in. Steelhead in the Napa River are listed as a threatened species, meaning that their populations have declined severely and conservation actions are needed to protect them. Steelhead are a particularly good indicator of watershed health and thus they are the focus of much of our fisheries monitoring and research. California roach are extremely abundant throughout the Napa River watershed. These small native minnows thrive in nearly any stream environment. They are always moving and looking for bits of food to grab, including the camera. The Pacific lamprey is the largest of the three lamprey species that call the Napa River home. Like salmon, Pacific lamprey spawn in fresh water and then migrate out to sea to live as adults. These primitive fish are often confused with eels, and in fact the Eel River was misnamed for its huge lamprey runs. Unlike eels, however, lampreys do not have a jaw. Simply, they instead rely on their sucker mouth and sharp teeth to attach to the sides of fish and extract bodily fluids and tissue. Most of the time, this is not fatal to the host but it does leave a round scar that stays with the fish for life. Do you see the fish in this clip? Sculpins are bottom dwellers that blend in perfectly with the substrate. They feed primarily on aquatic insects, but they also eat fish larvae and eggs if they are available. The Napa River supports three types of freshwater sculpin, which are very similar in size and appearance. The Sacramento sucker gets its name from its downward pointing vacuum-like mouth that it uses to pick off bits of food from the stream bottom. Suckers are one of the largest and longest lived fish species in the Napa River, reaching sizes of over 16 inches and living for 10 years or more. Because of their size and year-round availability, suckers were an important food source for Native Americans. Tule perch are unique among fish of the Napa River. Rather than laying eggs, they give birth to live, fully developed young. This greatly limits the number of offspring produced by this species, which may be why it is one of the less common resident fish we see. Three-spined sticklebacks are named for their sharp spines on the backs and sides, which they use for defense. This tiny species seldom grows more than two inches long, but it is capable of living in a broad spectrum of habitats from swift streams to stagnant pools. In order to understand the health of our watershed, we monitor the conditions of the fish populations within it. The RCD and our partners use a device called a rotary screw trap to collect and measure vital statistics on fish populations. The program is funded through a variety of sources and volunteers assist with the day-to-day -day operation. By conducting this monitoring in the same location and manner each year, we hope to see trends in the data showing improvements from restoration and other conservation measures being implemented throughout the watershed.